we have two disks of moment of inertia i1 and i2 that are connected with a rod the torsional coefficient of this system is c which means if you turn relatively both the disks by an angle theta then the torque on each of the disks will be c theta we need to find the period of oscillations so before we solve the problem let me introduce a concept of pseudo torque so you must have heard of pseudo force so pseudo torque is similar so it's similar to pseudo force and that problem which we solved in 4.58 so similar way we are going to solve this so initially let's see with respect to ground and then we will see the system with respect to one so let's say we keep this top disk fixed and rotate the bottom by an angle theta and then we release both the disks at the same time so relative angle turn between the disks is theta so let's say this is the mean position so we have kept this fixed and rotated this by angle theta so because the torsional coefficient is c the torque c theta will be applied on both the disks so i'm just keeping the top disk fixed so that is it's easy to see that the relative angle turned is theta because actually if i if i turn both the disks in opposite direction it will might be a little bit confusing so that's why i'm saying let's keep this disk fixed turn this by theta and then release both the disks so the torque on this disk will be in opposite direction c theta opposite to this angle turned and when you release this disk torque on this disk will be in this direction so you can see net torque on the system is going to be zero so equivalent in a spring to two block spring problem is when you just pull the both the blocks aside so keeping one of the blocks fixed let me show in the diagram so let's say we keep this block fixed and stretch it by an angle by a distance x and then release both the masses so force on both the masses will be kx and net force on the system will be zero so just like that we have kept this fixed turned this by theta and released so torque on both will be in opposite direction so net torque on the system is zero so this is with with respect to ground so let's write alpha of the top disk so that will be c theta by i1 now let's observe the system with respect to one so we have kept the one we are not releasing the one at all or even if you release we are looking at the system with respect to one so one is at rest so the alpha of this multiplied by i of this disk will be the pseudo torque on the bottom disk just like here if this has an acceleration a so if with respect to one acceleration uh, pseudo force on m2 will be m2 into a in opposite direction so here also alpha of this disk is in this direction c theta by i1 so with respect to one pseudo torque on this disk will be in opposite direction i2 times this alpha so pseudo torque i am showing with this dotted arrow so that is the pseudo torque that is i2 into alpha 1 why pseudo because this is with respect to 1 so this gives a uh, pseudo torque to be i2 c theta by i1 and the original torque on the bottom disk was c theta so that is retained so that's our regular torque and this is the pseudo torque and we can see also that with respect to 1 the angle turned by 2 is theta So now let's use this concept in solving our problem. So if we turn this again, the bottom disk by theta, so restoring torque on two with respect to one will be the net torque that will be c theta plus i two times c theta by i one. So this uh, torque tau of two with respect to one we can write as i two alpha. So alpha you will get in terms of some constant times theta. so that's a equation of shm where this is omega square so therefore the frequency will be root of this 
And since omega is same in all reference frame, so what we have calculated here is with respect to one, but omega is constant with respect to any reference frame. So our answer is still the same with respect to ground also.